this is our sixth video lesson on acceleration due to gravity. Um, if you're having any any weak areas in any of these lessons, make sure you go back through the lessons. Sometimes it's better to start with one and go all the way through and, and, and revisit lessons you might have not been familiar with. Okay, so we're going through the acceleration due to gravity learning targets. You're going to learn how, um, what, what the acceleration due to gravity of 10 meters per second squared means. i got a couple of animations to help you out with that. You're going to recognize the position time graphs and velocity time graphs that have acceleration due to gravity. You're going to be able to recognize what that 10 meters per second squared looks like. You're going to recognize when you have a property problem that needs uh, you to use acceleration due to gravity, and you will know how to solve those problems. So let's take a look. So the acceleration due to gravity, most places on Earth, is 9.8 meters per second squared down. So what that means is every second, an object will travel faster to the ground. An object that's in the air will tra travel faster to the ground by 9.8 meters per second, every second. That's where the second squared comes from. We're going to go ahead and round that to 10 meters per second squared because that number will change different places on Earth. The higher elevation, the the, the less gravity you have. Um, so we're just going to round to a, a, a good number. It's easy to conceptualize. And that's going to be the variable A in regular acceleration problems that have acceleration due to gravity, or G if it's a specialized problem where it's physically using the acceleration due to gravity. There's, like you'll see in the future, um, the weight equation to solve your weight is the FW equals MG. But that's a future lesson. So let's take a look closer at this velocity changes because acceleration due to gravity stays the same. It's always 10 meters per second squared. It doesn't matter if you throw it up at the top, wherever it is, if an object's free in the air, it's going to be accelerating downwards or changing its velocity downwards by 10 meters per second every second. Now, what does that do? If you take a look over here, it slows down an object on the way up, and it speeds up an object on the way down. Once again, the acceleration is never changing. It's the velocity that's changing. So that's really important to see. And another fact that you should know is if you throw an object up at 20 meters per second, you're going to catch it at 20 meters per second down. So it's a different velocity. It has the same speed or same magnitude of velocity, but the direction is going to be different. So if you threw something up at 40 meters per second, you're going to catch it at 40 meters per second down. Um, once again, acceleration, even at the top where it's 0 meters per second, always is 10 meters per second squared because what would happen is that ball would just sit there and hover if it ever changed. If that acceleration was also 0 meters per second squared, it, it would just hover. It would just stay there. It's not. It just keeps on changing the whole time. And you can see that a little closer on a velocity time graph in a few minutes. Okay, so here's a question for you. What's the acceleration due to gravity value, the number, and unit, and direction? It's going to be 10 meters per second squared down. So ask yourself these questions. Make sure you're, you're asking yourself these questions, pausing the video and answering them, and then checking your answer if you're using the video. If not, you might be using one of my near bots. What is the acceleration due to gravity of a ball thrown up at 10 meters per second squared? Still 10 meters per second squared down. It's always going to be 10 meters per second squared down. So let's see if I can catch you again. Number three, what is the acceleration due to gravity of a ball thrown up at 10 meters per second when it gets to the top of its flight path? Okay, so it stops at the top of the flight path. It's at, it's at rest for a second. What's its acceleration going to be? And it's still going to be 10 meters per second squared down. Once again, it's always changing that velocity. The ball is always never, never stopping. If it stops, it stops for a second. It's not continuously stopping. That's what I meant to say. What direction is acceleration due to gravity always directed? On Earth, that's going to be directed down because the Earth is pulling us to the ground, and we'll see in a future lesson that we're pulling the Earth up, but the uh, object that's accelerating is going to accelerate to the Earth. So here's a position time graph of a uh, ball being thrown up, and you can see in a position time graph what's actually happening. It's going up, slowing down the way up, it's going and it's coming back down. Its fastest motion is going to be at the bottom. Its slowest motion is going to be at the top. Minimum minimum velocity there. And so, yep, slowing down the way up, speeding up on the way down. Let's go ahead and look at some of the, the why, why that's the case. So what I want you to notice is that as it's going up, its velocity is positive. So we're going to call it up positive in this. But the acceleration or changing of the velocity is down. So it's slowing down on the way up, so it's deceleration. And then at the top, it's just going to be at rest for a second, but the acceleration never goes away. It's still 10 meters per second squared down. So zero velocity for, for a moment. And then at, after that moment, 
the acceleration is still there the whole time. And so we have our velocity now going down. After it stops, it's on its way down. And the sign of velocity and acceleration are both negative, which means it's going to speed up. And if it lands where it was thrown, it's going to land at the same velocity that it was thrown up at. Okay, so now let's look at a velocity time graph. So the velocity is changing. Watch how it's changing. It's going, in, you know, going from 20 to 0 to negative 20 at the bottom. It's just a different graph, so it still represents something different. This is the ball is still being accelerated at 10 meters per second squared. And what you need to remember is the slope of a um, velocity time graph is acceleration. So I can take the slope anywhere, and I should be able to take the slope from here. It, it changes its velocity by 10 in a neg negative direction in one second. And so I can see by that slope right there that the acceleration is 10, negative 10 meters per second squared. Um, let's just look at it a little closer. So once again, the ball at the beginning is going 20 meters per second up. In the middle where it stops is right here. It's going 0 meters per second. And then when it comes back and it lands, it's all the way over here four seconds later. Uh, not to, time, to scale by time, but, um, by, but in reality, that's what be, would be the case. Once again, slope is 10 meters per second squared down. Or negative if we're just looking at the graph, but negative would represent down. So on the way up, we have a positive velocity just by seeing at the top is it starts at positive 20 velocity. And the acceleration, the slope of this graph is down. So it's slowing down. Then at the top, right when it gets to this point right here, the velocity is zero for a second, but the acceleration is still sloped down. Notice how the slope, if you take two points around the zero point, the zero velocity or the rest point, it is a still sloping exactly the same. It's never changed its velocity. And all the way to the point where you get to the end. So on the way down, now we're in a negative velocity territory. Past below the zero point, once again, a velocity time graph shows you the velocity or speed in a direction. So now we're in the negative velocity point. Acceleration, the slope is still negative. Now we're going to be accelerating on the way down until the ball was caught. So here's a question, which represents the correct position time graph of a ball thrown up at 10 meters per second. And position time graph, you see that curve. You see it going up, you see it coming back down. So graph A. Which represents the correct velocity time graph of a ball thrown up at 10 meters per second. So that, you just have to tr trace the velocity from, from a positive certain number all the way to a negative of that number. If it landed at the same spot, if it kept on going down below, like let's say you were at the top of a cliff and you threw a ball up, and it landed at the bottom of the cliff, it's going to be going faster than it started on the way up, but on the way, but it'll be directed down. <clears throat> so that's if it low, if it lands lower than where it's thrown. Okay, so just once again, this curve, it's kind of, the position time graph is the curve represents the acceleration. So we're not going to calculate this off the graph, but that it keeps on curving, it keeps on sloping, it, the slope keeps on going in, in a downward pattern. And if we could calculate it, it would be by 10 meters per second every second. But we do that calculation on a velocity time graph, which is easier to see. We take the rise, our slope is rise over run, rise is, is velocity. We'll notice that every 10 meters per second that the velocity changes, we'll, we'll, we'll have one, one second tick by. So we're going to do uh, the equations like we did before in the acceleration unit, except now you have to recognize when a ball's in the air. Um, and then I just want to mention there are some specialized equations that we're not going to use. I, I think there, there's no need to memorize any extra equations. You actually don't have to memorize these. <clears throat> you can use an equation sheet, but until we're using certain a few certain certain few problems, I think this section can just um, benefit and increase your your um, your master uh, master tease of uh, of the acceleration problems. You just have to recognize one new thing: is the object in the air. Because objects in the air, there'll always be ex there's always going to be acceleration due to gravity. So this is what I was talking about with specialized formulas. Like you might see VF equals VI plus AT. Well, a specialized version of that would be VF final on the y-axis because it's going up and down. 
equal to the iy in the y-axis. Once again, y just specializing the initial y, but in the up and down direction. And then g just being uh, 10 meters per second squared. You see on your equation sheet, you might see 9.8. I don't care if you use 9.8 in your math. I'm just going to use 10 in my math um, so you can recognize it. But just specialize. They're exactly the same equation. So just go to your acceleration equations and use those. And watch out, and, and the problems right now, we're going to deal with all acceleration due to gravity problems. But then we're going to come back with some extra practice where I throw any kind of problem from this unit at you. And this is where you have to start recognizing things. Is it something being thrown up? Is something being dropped? Is it falling? If anything like this is happening, if it's just under the influence of gravity and doesn't have some sort of thruster, um, it's going to be, it's going to have a given A equals 10 meters per second squared down. Now I'm going to show you, I will not always call down negative. I will always call, call down negative if there's an up and a down in a problem, but you'll see that what I mean in a second when we get to the problems. So we're going to go to these equations, and we're just going to use, if you can recognize, there's acceleration due to gravity going on. A is going to be 10 meters per second squared down. And if it starts from rest, nothing you need to watch out for. If it's just falling or dropped, it's going to start with a VI of zero. So watch out for those. So let's do our first math problem. How fast is the ball moving when it's falling from rest? Okay, so it fell. So it's accelerating at 10 meters per second squared down. And from rest, so its initial velocity was zero. It's going to hit the ground, so t equals 1.5, and we're looking for how fast or vf. Make sure, once again, you're, you're uh, doing the problems before you see my answers. Okay, so these givens that I said earlier, once again, if you're missing givens, you need to not forget that there's acceleration due to gravity going on and rest. It's falling from rest, it's just being dropped at zero meters per second. And acceleration of 10 meters per second squared down. Um, there is no x in this, which you can't use any of these equations that have x. So that leads you to one single equation, vf equals vi plus at. This one, you don't have to do any rearranging. You just throw in the numbers. And um, one thing I didn't mention earlier, there are no ups in this question. There's only downs. So we're going to go ahead and call down positive. And then when we get to our final answer, it's also positive. And so we're going to just throw that down back on it. And if that's, if you're uncomfortable with that, you can go ahead and use a negative to represent down. It just, there's certain places where mistakes will be made. Uh, just things that students often forget in the future. If you don't start trying to do it this way, it's just, it's, it's a shortcut. Shortcuts aren't, aren't always the best, but um, they're, they're useful. Okay, eight. What is the displacement of a ball that's thrown up at 15 meters per second, one second after throw? Okay, so now it's asking you for displacement. It's thrown up, so we have 15 meters per second up. We have a time we're asked for one second later. Our acceleration is 10 meters per second squared down, so now we have conflicting up and downs. So now we have to go ahead and call one of these positive and one of these negative. Now it makes sense to call velocity positive 15 because it's up called um, the acceleration negative 10 meters per second squared because it's down. And then we look for our equation that has the x, the vi, the t, and a. And we're going to find this is missing a vf. So anything that has a vf, which are all three of the bottom problems, you can't use. So there's only one equation we can use. And then we go ahead and plug in our values into it. And you will get positive 10 meters. And since we called positive up here, Remember before we called, um, when there was only downs, we called um, positive down. Well, here we called positive up, so you got to put that same that same direction sign back on as a, a word. So 10 meters up. Um, another way to think about this is going to be 10 meters above the ground at that point. Okay, how long does it take a ball to hit the ground when dropped from 40 meters? Okay, what I want you to realize is, 40 meters, um, it's going to fall 40 meters down because it's falling from 40 meters in the direction it's going to go down. It's dropped, so the initial velocity is, is 0 meters per second, and it's going to accelerate. So here are our givens. The time, which is unknown, which we're trying to solve for. The x, which is it's going to fall 40 meters down in the process of this problem. So it might start at 40 up, but it's going 40 down. That's why this is going to be down, where it's going to be at the end. Um, and then its initial velocity from rest is 0 meters per second. And then its acceleration is 10 meters per second squared down. Well, look, we have down and down. We've got two downs. We have no ups. I'm going to go ahead and call the, I'm going to call down positive. I don't want to use negatives if I don't have to. And then there's only one equation that has these givens. So this one right here is missing VF. And there's that one equation from before. 
Now, here's a special thing I want you to do, um, just to avoid having to do the quadratic formula if the initial velocity was zero when it was fallen. So what you can do is look at this formula, plug in a zero for initial velocity. That's going to cancel out anything, no matter what the time is. Um, so it shortens this equation to where we wouldn't have to do the quadratic formula. It becomes x equals 1 half at squared. But we're still solving for t, so we're going to have to do a little algebra. What I did here, it looks a little ugly right here. I went ahead and took out 2 and multiplied both sides by 2 to get rid of this 1 half. I divided both sides by a to get rid of the a, just like that. So I'm left with t squared equals 2x over a. I set that backwards, but it's still the same thing mathematically, whether it's on the left or right. And then I need to take the square root of both sides. Taking the square root of both sides drops the squared, and I get t equals square root of 2x over a. Make sure that everything is in the parentheses underneath the square root. You may see a specialized formula on the equation sheet. I'll point that out in the 2D motion section. If you have a formula sheet printed out that, you, that you're using the same one as I, this only works if initial velocity is 0. But you'll see um, t equals square root of 2y, um, representing the y-axis over g. It's, it's the same formula, uh, specialized for gravity. So we keep on going. We plug in our numbers, and you'll get 2.83 seconds. If you got a number a lot bigger than that, you didn't take the square root, or you did something with not having everything together underneath the square root. Okay, what's the final velocity of a ball the moment before it strikes the ground from 40 meters? So a similar question, but now we're looking for final velocity. So we got VF equals question mark. It's going to fall 40 meters down from where it starts. It starts from rest, so VI equals zero. It's still um, falling, so its acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared down. Uh, we have two downs, so the same direction, so we're going to go ahead and call down positive. We pick out our equation, and we find the only equation that has those variables VF, VI, X, and A, and not T, because we don't have T and we're not interested in T, is this equation right here. Then we can go ahead and plug in our values. Um, make sure that you take the square root of both sides to get rid of the squared. We want vf, not vf squared. So you take the square root of both sides, that gets you this. And then you plug in your values. Don't forget to take the square root of your final answer. And you should get 28.3 meters per second. Okay, so what is the constant acceleration of 10 meters per second? What it does to velocity? What, what it does to velocity? Uh, what I want you to see here in this animation, one ball is thrown up. So it's going to start in the upward direction before it goes down. Another one ball right here in the middle, which you'll see in a second, it's going to just fall from rest. And the third one was thrown down at 10 meters per second. And what I want you to notice is that this one is always going slower or always going less downwards. It's going to be behind every other one. So they all change by 10 every single time. But this one, because it's thrown down in the first place, it started at 10 meters per second squared, meters per second down, and the acceleration of 10 meters per second squared one second later made that 20, then it made it 30, then it made it 40. Notice that number is always greater in the downward direction. So that might be a little easier to see in this animation. This ball on the right was thrown down at 10 meters per second. This ball on the left was, was dropped. So this one's going 0 when this one's going 10 down. This one's going 10 when this one's going 20 down. This is going 20 when this one's going 30 down. What you notice is that it's always going faster, so it's always covering more meters per second. So it's always getting further away, always increasing its separation. That's what we call it. And lastly, what has a greater acceleration due to gravity? A ball thrown up at 30 meters per second, a ball thrown up at 10, a ball dropped, a ball thrown at 30 meters down at 30 meters per second. So go ahead and answer that one. And the answer is they all are the same. They're all going to be 10 meters per second squared down.